Alrighty, welcome back to the channel lads and ladies and welcome to a special video called things I wish I knew about Pathfinder before I started playing. So first off and, and foremost, this game came out quite buggy but it's being aggressively patched. Now traditionally what companies used to do is they would spend about three months really refining their game and playtesting it after it was completely reduced in order to find bugs. Uh, now what they tend to do is launch it and then let the community find the bugs and jump on those as they pop up. Uh, and for a small group like Owlcat, it really, I mean, this saves thousands and thousands of dollars to use us as guinea pigs, uh, but what it ends up producing for us is a game that's borderline unplayable to a certain point, especially later in the game, especially with corrupted save file bugs um, that perhaps I'll talk a bit about in this video, but I need to move on. Uh, the game is buggy for now, uh, but it's going to be fixed, uh, I believe. And it is being aggressively dealt with by the team at Alcat Games. So, point number one, the game is buggy. Some features of the game's not going to work properly. And honestly, uh, if you bought the game when it launched, you're probably going to have to create a new game and start over just because of how those bugs accumulate uh, in your save file. It corrupts your save file. So... Uh, let me get to my list here. Uh, beginner tips. Right click for move facing. Okay, so you've got a group here and I'm just in, in my capital, so no group with me. But you can hold the right click and move the mouse to have your party face the direction of your drag. And you can adjust that however you like. So the quickest way is to point where you want the group to be and then drag where you want them to face and release right click. This can be absolutely essential uh, when lining yourselves up for that initial encounter. And it's also really helpful for reorganizing people mid-battle. Uh, you can select all of your ranged characters, uh, right click back a bit, and then have them face toward the battle and they'll know what to do. Okay, moving on. Next tip, uh, F5 for a quick save. So uh, it's one of those key bindings you can change if you wish, but F5 is how you can quickly save the game, and you can also change in your settings how many quick save slots there are. I recommend that you have more than one. Uh, I'm set up with four right now so that I have four different quick saves to choose from when I'm reloading a quick save. Okay, next on. Da, 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 da. When you set up a custom formation, every time you leave town, your player character, your main character, is the default leader of that formation. So you'll need to gr drag your character over to where you want them to be in the formation every time you leave town, every time you set up a new group. Uh, that's just the way it is. I get the feeling it's going to stay that way, so keep that in mind. If your main character, as mine, is not a frontline fighter, you're looking at uh, an Abyssal Sorcerer, by the way, which is a fantastic bloodline for the Sorcerer. I'll talk more about that later. Um, so keep that in mind. Next thing, and you get I get caught by this all the time. So use scrolls and potions outside of combat from your inventory. So ordinarily, you have to place uh, an item on your belt, a usable item, and then use it directly from your belt. However, uh, when you open the inventory, the world is paused. Outside of combat, you can use any number of scrolls and items instantaneously by right-clicking on them and then selecting Use. What's this good for? Uh, let's say that you want to buff up before a big fight. You can use all of your uh, scrolls of bark skin and uh, pot or sorry, potions of bark skin and blur and whatever resistances you want to add, uh, aid, haste, all these things that you're able to use. Uh, you can use those directly from here instantaneously and in in seconds you can be completely buffed up for your fight. You don't have to spend all that time buffing. And there's one specific fight that I'm thinking of that I, I, I you're pretty much scripted to lose, uh, but I gave it my best shot. So I had, I had that certain character uh, who is fighting alone use all of those uh, potions and scrolls that they could and uh, we lost the fight anyway. But that's a really helpful tip. You can use all of your potions and scrolls from the inventory when you're outside of combat 
instantaneously using that right click and use. What else? Here's a big one. Backspace selects everyone. So this selects all of your characters that show up on the bar here, and it also selects all of your animal companions. It does not select because you can't not directly control summoned creatures. Uh, summoned creature AI has been updated, interestingly enough, uh, but there's still no way to give direct commands to them, which is, I think, appropriate. Uh, but if you want to select everyone without having to drag or to shift click every single person, backspace. That'll be all characters and animal companions. Okay, moving on. Next up, you can move on the mini map by right clicking. So, and by that I mean the map. So here's the map. You can left click to center your camera on a portion of the map and you can right click to move to that place. And you see it's uh, it's real time while that's happening. You see new things showing up as we move to the new area. This can be extremely helpful for if you're on one side of a dungeon and you want to go all the way to the exit, you just right click and you start moving. now. If you don't see a green circle or a formation of green circles show up where you clicked, that means you're not able to move there. Uh, for instance, let's say I click uh, right here, right on the exit. You see it centers the camera there, but it's like you done did a dumb because it's actually outside of the playable area. Uh, also, you see that if I click here up on the wall, my circle goes as close to there as I possibly can but my character can't actually go there and you see the green circle doesn't go where my cursor is. In some dungeons there will be walls where you have to use a skill check or barriers uh, to get across and then obviously because you don't automatically perform those skill checks uh, you'll see your green circles show where your characters are actually going to go which is as close to the place you put your cursor as possible. Make sense? Uh, it really really helps after you've completed a dungeon. You just open your map, right click near the exit and then your players start moving there. You can even you know read a book while you take all that time uh, to get out of the dungeon. And of course, uh, the game should auto-pause if you encounter any enemies. Uh, keep in mind that your formation is going to be spread all over the place if you do that. So only move in that situation when it's safe to do so. Uh, we talked about how the game is currently buggy, uh, but that's something that's being aggressively dealt with by the, by the team at Alcat Games. Uh, rations and supplies are currently limited. So everything you can buy from the store is in limited supply. Uh, some things like BP, which uh, is a resource you use for kingdom management, uh, have a huge supply available that you should never run out of. But other things like rations and camping supplies, uh, the main store in your capital only has, I think, 60 total. So that's 10 days with a full party of resting without hunting for supplies. Why is this an issue? Because they never get refreshed at this point in the development of the game. Uh, so you need to decide when you're going to use your supplies. I recommend always leaving um, use rations unchecked in uh, camp management unless you're inside a dungeon and you have no other option uh, because that's when you're going to really need those supplies. Uh, other things as well, so keep that in mind. Uh, things like diamond powder, if you're burning through it, uh, it is limited in supply at this time. Uh, another thing, Ekundo has an ability uh, if you put him in the right slot when you're camping to where you use two less rations every time you rest. So, uh, theoretically, if it was just you and a kundo, you could sleep in a dungeon as much as you want to because that still works in a dungeon. Okay, uh, let's talk about custom portraits. I am going to make a, a major video on how to make your own custom portraits, uh, but for now, suffice to say, there are custom portraits available in the game. And let's see, I got the Nexus Mods one, and that's, that's all I have for you so far. So I found a great portrait link at uh, nexusmods.com slash pathfinder kingmaker uh, as you see here i'll try and put that in the description of the video and possibly also the first pinned comment uh, there's a process for importing custom pictures 
and they need to be a certain format. And again, that's something I'll cover in my video. And if you go to this link at Nexus Mods, you should have no trouble uh, following the directions to import custom pictures. It's really simple. But the main thing, let me show you, and this can be helpful for later. So the main thing is you need to find your play your Pathfinder Kingmaker install file. So install folder. So go into Steam, right click on Pathfinder Kingmaker, properties, and then local files, browse local files, and this will open up the Pathfinder Kingmaker folder. Uh, and now, oh, where was it? Is it in Kingmaker data? And then what is it? It's not that one. It's not that one. It's probably not that one. Yeah, no, it's not that one. Where is it? OGL. OGL. No. Okay. No. Hey, there's my art book. That's cool. I don't think it's that one either. No, it's not. Uh, it's in here somewhere. Oh, I know how to find it. Plugins. Resources. Streaming assets. Where did that thing go? Okay, so it's a bit hard to find is what I'm getting out of this. Um, I'll probably have to cut the video and then show you me actually knowing what I'm doing here. Here it is, streaming assets. And then bundles. Nope, that's just a heckums of a big old file. All right, I'll have to find it later. Just, uh, just ignore that part for now. Okay, but it can be done! Uh, <laughs> what else did I need to talk about here? Da -da -da, custom portraits. Kingdom management is unforgiving. Uh, so if you have uh, an issue with your kingdom, you need to deal with it aggressively. So if we go back into there... Uh, hi, Guppy. Hi. What do you want? You want Doggo? You want Doggo? We love Doggo! We love Doggo! Sorry, I got I got baby aggro. <laughs> you want a toothbrush? There you go. Have a toothbrush. Yeah, I love you. Okay, so kingdom management is unforgiving. You need to deal with kingdom issues right away, and even setting it to automatic doesn't necessarily save you. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Um, and a, a lot of the bugs in the game can mess with kingdom management as well. Is the game crashing? No. Okay. Uh, what else? Strength matters. So you, I highly recommend you have at least one character in your team that has a ludicrously high strength score. And even if their defensive strats or stats are not all that good, uh, you can equip them with a weapon that has reach and then cast enlarge on them, and they'll be able to reach enemies from two rows away, uh, like, what, 15 feet or so? And uh, that keeps them out of a lot of harm's way. Uh, and they can deal some serious damage, but the reason to actually have a character with ludicrously high strength is your carrying capacity increases exponentially with your strength score, especially once you get into like the 28, 30 strength score areas, and you're like, that's that's a crazy amount of strength. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, Dragon Disciple or uh, Abyssal Sorcerer Bloodline oddly enough, actually leads to uh, some of the highest strength stats in the game. Uh, a shape-changed um, druid can have a ludicrous strength score, although that's something that's a little bit difficult to maintain. And again, that's like level 12, level 14 stuff. Uh, but you want to have a high strength for carrying capacity so you can pick up all the loot. Uh, another thing that really helps is there are a few places that sell... Uh, bags of holding there's the Oleg's trading post sells a lesser bag of holding I believe and then there's a mage who lives in a single house out in the woods 
uh, that you will find over the course of the story. And uh, if you keep him alive, spoiler, uh, he can sell you a lesser bag of holding. And then there's also the main shop in your capital that sells a bag of holding. Uh, all of these items give a, a base increase to your carrying capacity and I highly recommend you pick them up. It might seem like a lot of gold at the time but trust me it's no big deal. There's plenty of gold coming later on uh, and you really don't need to buy a lot of magical equipment. Most of the stuff you find in dungeons is better than stuff you can buy in stores for the most part. Uh, so spend your money, spend your gold on bags of holding, uh, save your gold for emergency uh, BP purchases, and you'll understand what I mean once you start running your kingdom. And what else? Uh, we talked about how kingdom management is unforgiving, and I'm going to give you a few tips on that. Uh, we talked about how strength matters. Now let's talk about hiring mercenaries. Uh, as soon as you Again, this is a, a brief story spoiler. As soon as you liberate Oleg's trading post, you... Hi. Awa. Awa, awa, awa. Awa. What do you need? You need me to be, be a dada? Okay, Tank Baby says she needs me to be a dada, so I'm going to finish up this video as quick as possible. As soon as you liberate Oleg's trading post, an Oriel Eight Eyes will show up there, and later on she'll be in the tavern in your capital. And you may speak with her to spend a rather significant amount of gold to hire mercenaries. Uh, these mercenaries are created as create a new character uh, with a 20 point stat buy. Whereas you got a 25 point stat buy when you created your character. Uh, that's still plenty of points to buy your character with. And... Uh, let me get out of that again now. That's still plenty of points to buy your character with. And you just need to min-max the stats a bit. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And the main thing is you need to set aside that money. It's 2,000 for a level 1 character. And then it's it's upwards of uh, one to 2,000 gold per level uh, of your character to buy a mercenary. Now, mercenaries are created at your character's level, but at the lowest experience to reach that level. So if we go into our characters here, we have several mercenaries. Here's our main character. We see that we're a few thousand experience into level six. If we look at one of the mercenaries that we hired, uh, this fellow here, Brick, he's just about where we are because I was smart and I hired the mercenary right after I leveled up. Uh, however, sometimes you're going to get someone that's just a little bit behind. You see Schweitzer here is uh, level six, but he's a few thousand experience behind me. So that's something you want to keep in mind when you hire a mercenary. Hire them right after you gain a level so that their experience level is close to yours. And then looking at stats, uh, Schweitzer here is, uh, is a cleric and we put good points into wisdom and enough into charisma uh, so that he can channel energy effectively. And then we didn't really care about anything else. We gave him just enough dexterity uh, to use a ranged weapon and we had a few points left over we dropped into strength intelligence is a dump stat for him i don't care about his skills and then we look at another uh companion i've created here we have white uh, we really focused on his strength as you can see uh and then he is also an inquisitor with a decent wisdom so he can cast those higher level inquisitor spells but we don't need to keep on putting points into wisdom because all I need for him to do is to summon monsters because he's a monster tactician and then apply a few buffs to the party and then stick himself in uh, to melee combat. Again, he has really crud defensive stats as you can see with Dex and Khan, but that's okay uh, because he's using a long spear and he has reach normally and then that reach increases if I enlarge his size via the enlarge person spell which of course I keep it active via my main character you can see the difference in the stats because of the point buy and also because of the belt of physical perfection I'm wearing I know I'm physically perfect also you can see my adorable custom uh, portrait 
and that's one of those things that again I'll talk about more in another video and I've really focused on dexterity with a decent charisma to go along with it and my strength is going to go up because I'm an abyssal bloodline sorcerer uh, anyway guys uh, it sounds like tank baby is furious with me uh, because she wants me to go be a dada so I'm gonna go do that I'm gonna take care of my baby okay <laughs> now I've found something for tank baby to do she's one and a half uh, she doesn't need me anymore but she does get bored so she needs my attention every now and then uh, <laughs> now one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is you need to get a cleric uh, there are ways of getting a cleric in your party fairly early on in the story and those are things that you can pursue aggressively and then also one thing you may want to do is either create your main character as a cleric which is not a bad idea or hire a cleric as a mercenary right after um, freeing Oleg's trading post or maybe right after hitting level 2 for the reasons I mentioned before uh, but you want to get a cleric as soon as possible in fact I, I I'm an idiot. You hit level 2 right after freeing Oleg's trading post. So go ahead and pick up a cleric if you don't have one already. Uh, I'll show you the cleric I have in my party. This is Schweitzer. Uh, he is neutral, which means I have the choice to pick uh, channel positive energy or channel negative energy. But I want him to channel positive so he can heal my people as much as possible. And then looking at his stats, wisdom, it's good to have... A reasonably high but you don't need to max this out I tend to focus on uh, party buffs and heals and summons uh, so I don't need to worry about things like the DC of uh, my spells charisma is a useful skill uh, and then I don't need to have this guy as a frontline fighter so I didn't put a lot of stats into his defensive scores now if this is a main character uh, you may want to build this differently uh, clerics can be the best frontline fighters uh, if you set them up properly uh, but I've got this guy just as a healer well why do you need a healer in your party uh, you are going to take significant amounts of damage over the course of the game and without a cleric in your party that damage is only going to heal when you rest or use healing potions and both of those are extremely inefficient. Cleric is the class with the best healing abilities uh, followed closely by paladin. Uh, so having one of those, if not both, in your party. Here's my paladin. Uh, he's fantastic, by the way. Uh, he shredded to pieces uh, a monster that wiped my entire party uh, and then I reloaded my game and I was like okay use smite evil on him and he just personally ripped this guy's duodenum out of his body cavity within a few rounds and took the guy out one on one so uh, paladins can be good is what I'm saying <laughs> but you need a healer in your party because you'll spend way too much time resting if you don't and that will cost you because there's a lot of things in this game not to mention uh, the main story that are bound by time so if you don't jump on these things right away uh, then you won't be able to take full advantage of the event and there's uh, again there's lots of things you can basically just assume that every quest you get uh, it's going to have some kind of time crunch on it so if you if you go after it early you'll get a better reward than if you spend a bunch of time in your camp recovering from your wounds uh, and you guys hope you enjoy this game uh, sorry for sort of the low production quality on this one I just wanted to get this video out there because I know there's a lot of you guys just starting this game and getting frustrated with certain things uh, if there's other things you wish you knew uh, feel free to share those with me in the comments and also feel free to join my discord I'll put a link in the description and then finally huge shout out to Eltimar gaming uh, he's been doing a playthrough of Pathfinder Kingmaker that's really worth watching if you want to pick up on the things that you should know uh, and some story hints and things uh, then I would watch his videos he's entertaining 
and uh, he's actually showing an entire playthrough of the game unlike what I'm doing here where I'm just giving you some highlights of helpful information and walking around on the screen randomly because I don't know what to do with my hands <laughs> anyway guys I'll be bringing you some more guides to Pathfinder Kingmaker and uh, this this was before I caught the flu uh, a channel on mostly War Thunder so you see some more of that as well anyway guys I'll catch you in the next video Bye bye